So, welcome back to this NPT lecture on uh, friction and wear of uh, materials. Uh, in last uh, few lectures, I have uh, discussed the some of the case studies to explain the nature of friction and wear properties of metals and ceramics in cryogenic environment and cryogenic means more particularly liquid nitrogen environment and under high speed sliding conditions. This is the last lecture on the cryogenic wear of materials and the, in this lecture I will describe one more uh, case study again from our own research and that is on silicon carbide ceramics. Now, silicon carbide and silicon nitride these are the um, these are the two non oxide ceramics which has received wider attention particularly for high temperature applications. And silicon carbide and silicon nitride these are also used as the ball bearings in uh, 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 as, 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 as ball bearings because you can uh, you, um, uh, you can shape them to a uh, balls of different sizes. So, it was interesting for us to, uh, to understand and investigate the sliding wear of silicon carbide in cryogenic environment with an objective to assess their suitability for uh, ball bearings in space shuttle main engines. So, this was the background. So, as I have categorically mentioned in one of the earlier lectures that uh, 440C martensitic stainless steels or 304C stainless steels, they are mostly sort material currently used for ball bearings in space shuttle main engine. And under high speed sliding conditions, high friction and wear of unlubricated bearings can be tolerated, but it severely cartels the overall life of the bearings. And then uh, in some of the earlier uh, some of the earlier lectures I have mentioned that how um, uh, this uh, how the cryogenic wear properties uh, of these two oxide ceramics one is that alumina and another one is zirconia how they are different from their room temperature sliding conditions. So, here we would like to uh, again address the similar issues that I have posed uh, while discussing uh, the earlier case studies and those are whether liquid nitrogen serves as coolant or lubricant and what would be the influence of liquid nitrogen on free fun frictional and fracture behavior at sliding contacts and how does the material removal process occur in liquid nitrogen environment and how does the change of environment liquid room temperature to liquid nitrogen modifies the friction and wear properties of alumina. Similar to, our, similar to earlier case studies, here we have varied the uh, sliding speed uh, from 0.67 meter per second to 1.1 meter per second. And load, if we, if, we, if we keep the load at 5 Newton, we have found that uh, coefficient of friction is around 0.38, so around close to 0.4, which is relatively higher compared to uh, some of the metals and hydrogen contact stress is 1.2 giga Pascal, mean average hydrogen contact stress is 0.8 giga Pascal and flash temperature is uh, at 0.67 is sub 0 temperature at 1 a 0 0.8 and is 47 degree Celsius and 1.1 meter per second it is more than 100 degree Celsius and flash temperature was calculated uh, according to the equations that I have described at greater details in one of the initial lectures in this NPTEL uh, lecture series. And flash temperature also we calculate in the room temperature environment. Now, this is how the coefficient of friction evolves with time for the tests that we have conducted up to 10 minutes that is up to 600 second. So, what you see here that this coefficient of friction goes of very high value and then it goes through some kind of um, unstable region and then finally, it reaches the steady state after the 5 minutes and then it gets uh, very much flattened. Uh, and if you compare the steady state coefficient of friction 
we do not see much change because it varies over the window of 0.3 to 0.4, but there is lot of um, undulations there. Uh, if you look through this very closely that frictional behavior of self mated silicon carbide. How about frictional behavior of self mated silicon carbide that means silicon carbide versus silicon carbide. So, here the flat material is silicon carbide and ball material also silicon carbide and under the similar uh, uh, sliding conditions with variation in uh, speed from 0.67 to 1.1 meter per second and the load is around 5 Newton. We see not much difference in terms of the steady state coefficient of friction. Only thing is that in room temperature conditions that this couple reaches the steady state at much earlier time scale of up to 3 to 4 minutes, but whereas in liquid nitrogen we see lot more unstable region in the frictional behavior. So, if you go back to this particular table where these things are uh, kind of fill in the blanks and you can now fill in the blanks because this there is not much difference in terms of the steady state coefficient of friction between room temperature and liquid nitrogen tests. Now, as far as the quantitative uh, data on the wear resistance is concerned, this is the results we have obtained in liquid nitrogen environment uh, based on the laser surface profilometric analysis of the uh, sliding track. What we got that wear depth is fairly small. So, wear depth is less than uh, 0.4 micron. Okay. This is the wear depth and wear depth decreases as you increase the speed and it reaches almost like a uh, steady state value of around 0.1 micron. As far as the wear rate is concerned, it is 10 to the power minus 6 millimeter cube Newton meter and again it changes from 3 10 to the power minus 6 to less than 1 10 to the power minus 6 millimeter cube per Newton meter for self mated silicon carbide at 5 Newton load. So, less than 0.4 micron depth at such a high speed sliding conditions and under high contact stress is really a good number. So, what I point out here that it is 3 into 10 to the power minus 6 goes to less than 10 to the power minus less than 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 means that once you go down the scale here. So, here you can approximate as millimeter cube per Newton meter. So, essentially what I am trying to point out here that it is possible to decrease the wear rate by one order of magnitude or it is possible that self metered silicon carbide can experience one order of magnitude less wear rate at higher sliding uh, speed of 1.1 meter per second compared to that what he what the self metered silicon carbide experiences at 0.67 meter per second. So, all in all there is uh, wear rate and wear depth both the data if we consider together it really leads to the conclusion that self metered silicon carbide experiences very high wear resistance or less wear rate in liquid nitrogen environment. Now, if you look at that uh, similar data uh, of wear rate and wear depth after self metered silicon carbide are slided at ambient conditions that is room temperature and this is that wear rate that is that was measured on the silicon carbide flat. And what you see again that this uh, wear rate wear rate decreases and uh, almost like linear linear fashion as we increase the sliding speed from 0.67 to 1.1 meter per second. The same is true for the wear depth, but both the numbers here if you compare to the liquid nitrogen conditions sliding conditions because both the y scale are the same if you notice here and if you and if you compare now the y scale values then you are convinced that room temperature uh, uh, sliding conditions uh, um, leads to more wear of the self metered silicon carbide um, 
under these particular sliding conditions on a pin on disc tribometer. So, there is a very clear signature that wire resistance on a hole or as a combination of wire rate and wire depth is much reduced in liquid nitrogen sliding conditions compared to that under ambient condition. Now, this is the typical uh, 2D surface profiles what we have measured in laser surface profilometer LSP stands for laser surface profilometer. So, you have the sliding speed like 0.67 meter per second to 1.1 meter per second and you can see very clear sharp peaks and valleys in the 2D surface profile. What it means is that these are the signatures of the differential wear that means this wear uh, profile or 2D surface profile is not very smooth and it shows multiple uh, multiple surface groups of different uh, of different heights and also different shape. So, essentially this is the these are the signatures of the differential wear behavior. Now, if you look at this uh, uh, scanning electron microscopy images, so this is your sliding track and this is your uh, sliding uh, uh, directions. And if you look at little bit closely, if you look at this particular region, so there is some contrast difference showing that perhaps some of the silicon carbide can be oxidized to silica. Let us look at much more details into what is happening at intermediate sliding speed of 0.89 meter per second after the sliding is over for 10 minutes. Okay. So, this is your sliding directions. And if you look at this particular region or this particular region, here you can clearly see this backscattered electron image, it appears with different contrast compared to this particular region of the sliding surface. So, that means the tribochemistry plays a role and also there is tribochemical reactions that is taking place under these sliding conditions at 0.89 meter per second. This is at the high sliding speed conditions and you can see this is your wire track and this wire track a closer look at this particular region clearly shows you that there are multiple or there is numerous micro cracks. So, this micro cracking is playing an important role in this particular case and that is a high sliding speed of 1.1 meter per second. Um, unlike this alumina or zirconia. Uh, in silicon carbide, we have fixed the normal load of 5 Newton, but ideally using the same using the same tribometer one can do the experiments with variation in the normal load. But here we are more interested to understand that if you increase the, or if you vary the sliding speed over similar window, what would be its influence on the wire resistance and wire mechanisms of self metered silicon carbide rather than load dependent wire behavior of self metered silicon carbide. So, you will see that similar behavior at 1.1 meter per second at some part of the tribal layer and you can see this is the region where it clearly shows that this, this particular region should have different chemical composition or different chemistry compared to this particular region. So, this region certainly is very rough and this roughness of this worn surface uh, is uh, can be attributed to cracking and localized spalling uh, from the tribal layer. So, this is even that higher sliding speed of 3.3 meter per second at 10 Newton load and here again we have done the experiments up to 1200 uh, seconds. So, 1200 second means up to 20 minutes. So, we cannot do one of the things I think I might have mentioned in the earlier lecture that th there are two major difficulties with using this uh, cryogenic sliding wire experiments. The first one is that, that with this tribometer it is extremely important to fix or place the ceramic disc inside the tribometer in a very stable manner. If there is certain difference in the uh, top surface or the leveling of the surface, then what would happen ceramics being brittle materials when it will experience high sliding speed against the ball when ball is stationary and then disc is rotating there is every chance a ceramics will be disc will be broken into two pieces. 
But here we are more interested to know how does the ball behave. It is not about the disc, but in the ball, but to have the self mated conditions essentially we are trying to understand that under the self mated conditions when the ball will be slided against the same material of similar composition, what would be the influence on its friction and wear behavior. So, from that point of view we have uh, conducted all these experiments. So, the first difficulty is that placing the ceramic disc and that is very important. Second one is that we could not we cannot carry out this uh, high speed gliding, sliding where experience a cryogenic environment for up to longer time period like up to 30 minutes uh, continuously because it causes a um, lot of undulations and because of the high speed sliding conditions. And in the space shuttle main engine also as far as the bearing life is concerned the port 40 c martensitic stainless steel bearing ball used to um, have a life of less than half an hour. So, if we can do these tests up to 20 minutes or so on that is good enough for these particular applications in mind. Now, coming back to this particular uh, scanning electron microscopy images again you see this large region here it is a tribal layer and also here and if you blow up this particular uh, blow up this particular region some other region you can focus then you can see that there is a very thin tribal layer which is covered on this individual silicon carbide grain. Okay. So, essentially these are the places where silica uh, rich layer perhaps have formed. So, 3.3 meter per second indeed is very high sliding speed and under these conditions the only way that the silicon carbide is worn out it is because of the grain boundary cracking. And you can see that at various locations like these locations as well as these locations there are small micro cracks which are found and this presence of this micro cracks essentially indicate the occurrence of the intergranular cracking. The same is true for little bit higher magnification ACM images um, just to illustrate that how this uh, silicon carbide wear is influenced by high speed uh, sliding conditions. So, this is that one arrow and this is the another arrow as you can see that these are cracking also it is shows and also there are small pockets of the pull out region that you can clearly see here in the on the on the own tribological surface. And also you can see this is the layer of the tribology tribal layer and this is again in the region that where the micro cracks takes place. So, what you have seen earlier uh, in case of alumina and zirconia and what you see now in case of silicon nitride I am sure that you would agree with me that sliding wear of silicon carbide is governed by more tribomechanical wear and partial tribochemical wear. If the tribochemical wear would have played a major role then entire tribal layer would be covered with the tribochemical layer and that is certainly not the case. Second thing is that despite the dominance of the tribomechanical wear what you see the tribo surface is relatively smooth not extremely rough what we have seen earlier in case of alumina particularly in case of the alumina which is again a model uh, brittle ceramic. Now, if you go back to now if you look at the uh, where at the grain level or the grain scale now if you see this is the two silicon carbide grains which is uh, tabular in nature and you will see that this uh, sorry this region is ar again ar another uh, region where you can see cracks. So, there is micro cracks grain boundary cracks and these cracks sometimes goes deep into the material. So, this cracking is taking place, but the cracks are getting deflected around the grain boundary region. And if you look at the uh, crack deflection along the grain boundary region, so essentially that crack deflection uh, leads to delayed wear in case of silicon carbide. So, the, if the grain boundaries are the paths for the crack propagation or the crack deflection certainly it, it will help in increasing the wear resistance of these materials. So, this is what we have seen at 3.3 meter per second for 20 minutes of the sliding speed. Now, if one look at the if, if we compare this is fairly an important slide. 
So, let us spend some time in, uh, in, uh, in comparing the numbers which are placed in this uh, slide. So, in last two lectures we have seen that self matter silicon alumina self matter zirconia. In this lecture I have described the uh, wear behavior of self matter silicon carbide. Now, if you want to uh, be extremely fair in making this comparison, it is important to fix the load um, because the load is uh, load load is varied in these three studies, but one load is very common for alumina zirconia and silicon carbide that is 5 Newton load. And a 5 Newton load depending on what is the kind of elastic modulus of the materials that leads to difference in the hydrogen contact stress. For example, oxide ceramics their elastic modulus is relatively lower compared to silicon carbide. So, therefore, in the oxide ceramics here like alumina is 390. So, their gigapascal is the elastic modulus. So, this is the elastic modulus value I am talking about. Zirconia is 210 gigapascal and silicon carbide is little higher than uh, alumina also. So, 5 Newton load it amount it leads to 1.2 gigapascal as a maximum hydrogen contact stress which is 0.78 in case of alumina and which is 0.49 in case of zirconia. Now, typically the wear rate in case of alumina is around 10 to the minus 10. In case of zirconia it is 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 10. And in case of in case of silicon carbide is 10 to the minus 7. So, if you look at that wear rate alumina is certainly highly wear resistant or 10 to the minus 10 uh, followed by zirco, uh, followed by silicon carbide 10 to the minus 7 and, uh, and zirconia is least wear resistant at 10 to the minus 4. Zirconia also uh, experiences a high coefficient of friction about 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 whereas, uh, silicon carbide this free coefficient of friction is around 0 0.38, alumina it is the lowest. So, looks like alumina is the better um, wear resistant uh, materials as far as the cryogenic sliding conditions conditions. Remember all this data that we have summarized in this table are obtained under liquid nitrogen sliding conditions not like uh, not in the room temperature. However, only one point that I must note here that wear depth wise alumina has larger wear depth 5.5 whereas, silicon carbide is 0 0.1 extremely small and alumina and zirconia is relatively similar like 5 to 5.5 micron. So, 5 micron versus 0 0.1 micron it is a order of magnitude difference right. So, I, I just what I wanted to compare these two values 5 versus 0 0.1 it is order of magnitude difference in the wire depth. So, therefore, uh, what I believe that if you compare these two like say uh, 10 to the power minus 7 and 0 0.1 micron wire depth uh, looks like silicon carbide is not a bad choice either. So, therefore, what I believe that although alumina um, alumina is a good choice, but silicon carbide is also equally the second choice. So, number one choice is alumina, number two choice is silicon carbide. And we have also established a close correlation between the wear mechanism and the wear rate and where we have found in self metered silicon carbide it is a uh, limited tribochemical reactions and uh, more of tribomechanical wear with grain boundary cracking, localized spalling as a major wear mechanism. Zirconia, it is a transformation induced cracking in, and if you remember correctly in case of zirconia I have shown that tetragonal zirconia undergoes phase transformation to orthorhombic zirconia during the cryogenic sliding conditions. And the reason that I have provided while explaining this intriguing observations was that tetragonal zirconia uh, to monoclinic zirconia uh, transform this particular transformation that one is the intermediate product that is orthorhombic zirconia. Since we are doing these experiments for relatively shorter time 10 minutes or so we are giving the system uh, we are not giving enough time to the system to come back to the equilibrium transformation phase that is a monoclinic zirconia and therefore, orthorhombic zirconia forms. And in case of the alumina what happens it is that 
thermal conductivity effect is also very important and we have seen the occurrence of both intergranular and transgranular fracture, cleavage steps and so on and that leads to uh, the uh, uh, that leads to wear of self mated alumina as well. So, these are the conclusions um, this is that high speed ball on this tribometer uh, has been used and this has been designed fabricated and their perform his this performance has been tested to study the uh, sliding wear of self metered alumina, self metered zirconia and self metered silicon carbide and self metered alumina exhibits the lowest COF primarily due to 3 body abrasion, highest COF of 0.5 is observed for self metered zirconia, again it is extensive thermal induced fracture, severe micro cracking uh, uh, and cleavage fracture dominates the wear of self metered alumina or zirconia and this is the uh, kind of key summary uh, on this cryogenic wear of ceramics and then what we call is that new findings like under high speed sliding conditions co coefficient of friction of self metered alumina in liquid nitrogen is lower due to 3 body abrasion and the for the first time we have reported uh, I think it was in American ceramic society journal that tetragonal zircon to orthorhombic zircon phase transformation can take place under cryogenic sliding conditions. And if you remember correctly that one of the intriguing observations was the fiscal micro cracking pattern uh, uh, which was observed for self metered zirconia. So, this is the summary of the cryogenic wear of materials in. So, what we have uh, observed that the differences in the wear mechanism can be attributed to a host of factors uh, and those include the cryo cooling effect and faster heat dissipation. Second one is a brittle fracture enhancement and phase transformation and unique cracking characteristics. Third one in the changes in the mechanical property and surface hardening and fourth one in case of silicon carbide it is a limited tribochemical wear for metals or non oxide ceramics that is silicon carbide. Okay. So, with this I close this uh, all these um, lectures on the cryogenic uh, sliding wear of materials and then I will uh, now start with this uh, um, wear of the high temperature ceramics. Thank you.